So can I just smile and then you just add into every section? So I smile now, then you add on. Uh. <laughs>Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Sim Sien Ling. I'm a colorectal surgeon, come general surgeon. I've been practicing in a field of colorectal surgery since 2011, so I have about 10 years of uh, experience in this field. So benign conditions are largely non-cancerous conditions on the colon and they can be categorized into growths such as polyps or lipomas, that means fatty lumps, or what we call diverticular disease which is generally a degenerative condition of the colon. Um, other categories are such as ischemia related to poor blood supply and other categories like infection and inflammatory conditions of the colon. These benign conditions can potentially cause danger to the body in a few settings. Uh, firstly, if you have got growth such as polyps that is un undetected for many years, it can evolve into a, a cancer. And if a cancer is not diagnosed until very late stages, it can actually limit your survival. If uh, diverticular disease, for example, result in severe excessive bleeding, that can also cause a uh, severe hypotension, and if it's unattended in time, that can also result in death. Other conditions such as ischemia as a result of poor blood supply to the colon, uh, this generally happens at certain at-risk patients or elderly patients. This is one condition that we should handle also immediately. And lastly, if you have conditions uh, related to severe infection or inflammation, and uh, if the infection is severe and it results in perforation of colon, it's also important that this condition get treated timely. Trying to differentiate between benign and malignant conditions may not be that easy. However, I think as clinicians, we are trained to take a good history. So from the history, we can ascertain from the chronicity of the symptoms. Uh, if it's something that's uh, long duration, of course, then it's more likely to be a malignant process. If the patient has got uh, associated symptoms of loss of appetite and loss of weight, this also signifies a more likely a malignant process. However, in order to uh, absolutely come up with a diagnosis and differentiate the two conditions, we will require further evaluation such as scans, CT scans, or a colonoscopy. So the only benign condition that can evolve into cancer is this entity, what we call adenomatous polyps. So this brings to the point that it's extremely important that patient comes forward for screening, especially if you're at risk or if you're age 50 and above, because it's only through the detection of these polyps that we can remove them and potentially prevent cancer. I think it's important that you be aware of screening and come forward for screening once you're 50 and above or if you have got risk factors, because this is the only way where we can pick up polyps or early cancers. Polyps are highly treatable through a colonoscopy. Uh, we can actually perform polypectomy to remove those polyps. However, there are certain polyps that are detected a bit later and they're going to quite a relatively big size and we may require advanced endoscopic techniques to remove these polyps. Uh, lastly, certain polyps may have already developed into a cancer and these cancerous polyps should be treated with a surgery. Food that are related to colorectal polyps or cancers are essentially uh, 1. fatty food such as fried food, uh, 2. processed food such as uh, canned food, uh, ham, bacon, sausages, and lastly, red meat. So we should try to eat beef, pork, and duck in moderation. Food that is healthy for the colon are as follows. Firstly, whole grains such as oats and brown rice. Um, secondly, fiber, we're talking about vegetables and fruits. 
Uh, thirdly, um, non-fatty dairy products. Fourthly, beans like black beans are also good for the colon.